Welcome to Citizen Survival Plan and welcome back if you've been here before. Today we are going to talk about repeaters. Having your own repeater for local comms during an SHTF event gives you so much more capability than simplex or radio to radio communications. In my opinion, it gives you more capability than having the most powerful radio. Setting up your own repeater exactly where you need it or on your own property is an amazing amazing way to enhance your radio communications greatly. I think these products are great and can be relied on more than using existing repeaters in your area. We won't know which repeaters will still be working or which ones are hooked to solar for grid down events and in today's video we're going to go over the types of GMRS repeaters you can set up and why I like the MXR10 from Midland. Let's go over a couple examples of repeaters for GMRS. Now, there's probably other ways to do it, but this is kind of just the main ones that I know of. The makeshift repeaters that you see people hook those tiny little boxes up and it's two cables between two radios. I have tried a couple of these and in my opinion, they suck. They are not worth the money. Other people could have different results, but from the few that I've tried, they'll work up close, but as soon as you get maybe a half a mile away or so, I get nothing but static. And it was like that for all of them. All the brands are the same, and a lot of them are off really cheap websites like AliExpress or something. They're just junk in my opinion, and they're not recommended by me. One of my favorites is the simplex repeater, meaning it operates on one channel with no offsets. So this is kind of cool because you can just set it up on a regular channel and everyone can just be using like one of the GMRS channels and it will just operate on it by recording and spitting back out what it just heard out onto the channel. The downside to this is you are going to hear yourself and everyone twice. Everyone that's talking on it, every time you say something, it's going to repeat it back. So everyone's got to be patient when using a simplex repeater. There is two ways that I know of doing this, and that is the way that I do it, and I have a video on it, I'll tag it here, um, is with the B-Tech GMRS Pro and it goes into an audio relay mode or you can sorry you can set it into an audio relay mode and it will do exactly that it records and retransmits what it hears surecom makes a little simplex repeater that you can hook to a radio i have no experience with this i see mixed reviews on it but it's out there it's not that expensive and you're welcome to try it so this is a cool way of setting it up. It's a little bit more expensive. I would say this is gonna cost you about 1200 bucks to do this setup, maybe more depending on how you get it set up. Um, you use two Woshin or Ocean or Waxon, however you wanna pronounce it, KG1000G pluses and they link together and you can use one as the transmit radio and one as the receive radio. This setup is more expensive and it's a little trickier because I have to use two antennas. I have to have one antenna as the receive and one as the transmit. This complicates things because you need a lot of coax and a lot of space on your roof to spread the antennas out so they aren't interfering with each other. This can be simplified by using a duplexer and going through a single antenna, but again, we're raising the price, then we have to go and buy a duplexer. If you want to see someone who has actually set this up, I am not affiliated with this person. I do watch his videos. It is not a Rubicon. I'm pretty sure has this exact setup that I'm talking about on his channel. If I can, I will link that video below as well. Not a Rubicon is a great channel to watch if you're into GMRS. Again, I don't know the guy. Great channel though. Last is like a duty grade or commercial grade repeater. These are very much more elaborate setups. Uh, they're on typically there's a whole shelf for them with fans running and multiple radios and a duplexer and they don't run the, like radios like consumer radios. It's actually like a Motorola 
radio setup with, you know, it, it's just a more robust, expensive system. You're gonna see this with GMRS clubs who have got together and set up a repeater in an ideal location, like up on a mountain. This is a more permanent setup that you would see with a very tall antenna tower to cover an area. This is most of the time, in my opinion, is a setup you see when multiple people are involved with a hobbyist group that set something like this up in an ideal location. Okay, so let's get into the Midland MXR10. It says it's 16 channel compatibility. Um, not really, it's eight channels. Uh, if you look here, there is only eight repeater channels in existence. They are counting the narrow band channels that they programmed into this which we're gonna ignore and delete out anyways. Uh, it says it's 10 watts of high power. I would say once it goes to the duplexer, you're gonna get five or six watts. And then it has all of the normal stuff in it, like squelch and all of your tones that you can program in. And one thing to note about this is Midland's tones are stupid, but with this one, they normalize them so they match all the rest of the GMRS tones. And I'll put that on the screen here. I'll show that Midland's tones uh, for their GMRS radios have to just be different than everyone else's. But with this product, they did simplify the tones, which I'm glad. So let's go ahead and open it up and see everything we got in here. All right, so in the box, you have your actual repeater. Um, you have an AC outlet adapter that I'm probably not gonna use, but it is included, and a programming cable. I am gonna screen share this and show you how to actually hook this up to your, up to your computer and program it. It's actually really simple. I suck at computers, and I was able to figure it out in just a few minutes. This is your manual that you really don't need but it's in there here is where the programming cable hooks up this is your power hookup for your ac or dc power i am really glad they have dc power on this because i want to hook this up to a battery and run it dc power and that is a lot more efficient way to run a repeater or any radio that you have hooked to a battery pack. So like all base station radios, it has an SO239 connector and it just hooks to the regular base station antennas that you would get. So we are just gonna plug it in here just so I can show you the screen. There's really not much to see here. I just have it hooked to a battery here. The screen is gonna come on um, this is, we are in repeater 7, which is actually repeater 21, if you look at the screen. Everyone names the channel something different. The best thing to do is just focus on the frequency you have it tuned to. These are the control buttons on the actual repeater. There's not much you can do here. Uh, if you long press the arrows, it will cycle your channels up and down. Uh, there is volume control on this, but from my testing, it makes no difference. The volume control must be for when you hook a mic up to it, because it, even if you put it to zero, it still transmits fine. I can hear it on the other radio. It's not changing the volume at all. So it's got to be for a mic. And if you hold, you can see your RX and TX tones. If you hold both buttons down to show the tones, you can also put a lock and unlock on the screen shown here. If I hold it, that little key lock is in the corner there. It shows it's locked. I don't really know why you would need to lock it, but it's there. So this is the difference between a simplex repeater and the actual Midland repeater. This is on audio relay mode, which is basically turned this BTEC GMRS Pro into a simplex repeater. So whenever I talk into this, it's going to record it and spit it back out. So you're going to hear everything you say twice. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. So it records it and sends it back. 
Now this does all that simultaneously with one singular antenna. So it's not dual antenna setups on this and that's why I like this repeater so much. So let's demonstrate how this works. So this is the difference when you have a repeater with a duplexer. This is gonna listen on 467 and it's gonna transmit on 462. So what this does is it keeps you from hearing everything twice. It will simultaneously transmit everything. It'll take it in on one frequency and spit it out on another all at the same time. So let's go ahead and show that. What I'm gonna do is this is on repeater seven or 21, depending on what chart you're using, but they're all on the same repeater channel. So I'm gonna key this radio up and it's gonna activate this one over here and it's gonna do it all at the same time. It's going out of this one through this and into that radio. So it is repeating it simultaneously. This causes less confusion when you're using a repeater because everyone's gonna hear themselves twice when they talk on a simplex repeater and people just aren't that patient sometimes. This simplifies the process. One note about one thing I don't like about this repeater is Midland doesn't claim that it has any waterproof rating. So if you were gonna put this outside hooked to a battery, you have to put it into some sort of waterproof container, which is kind of disappointing, but it kind of makes sense because there has to be power outlets and whatnot on it. Um, so just a note, in another video, I am going to do an outdoor setup with the battery and an antenna coming out of a box. I'll see what I can come up with, but that's like the ultimate goal with this is to be able to move it around and set it up at different places that you want. Okay, so we're going to get ready to show you how to program this thing. It's pretty simple. This is the USB. It just plugs into any laptop or computer. I'm sure it works with Mac. Um, this connects on to here and the first time I went to go program this I didn't tighten the screws I just plugged it in I thought it would be okay but if you do not tighten these screws down it'll throw errors and I don't know why I thought it I thought it would be okay but you have to tighten the screws down or else it won't take the programming so just a weird note whatever all right so we are in the programming here uh, these are your frequencies I deleted out all the narrow band channels I just don't care. I'm never gonna use narrowband. These are your frequencies, so if you wanna set a tone, you can just click on them in the program, and you can just pick a tone. We'll do that, and it'll set it for both. Uh, just note, you can change the input tone and output tone to different tones. If you want, I'm not gonna do that. I would just leave them the same, um, but it is an option, so you could actually, if you are doing this, you could make the uh, transmit tone different from the receive tone. Again, I'm not gonna do that, it's an option. It wouldn't be too difficult, I just don't see the reason for it. You would just go into your program and change your tones, you know, your input tone and your, your sorry, you would change your transmit tone and receive tone just to whatever you set it here. Um, again, it's just it's just going to be simpler just to set them the same. In the program too, you can also choose between high and low power. This thing's really only going to put out probably five or six watts, so I would just leave it on high. Um, unless you're really trying to conserve power and the where you have the repeater just isn't so far away that you can't get to the next person over. But I would just leave it there. And then obviously I'm going to leave it in wideband the whole time. So we set this and these are all my tones I programmed in here already. I just wanted to show you, you can go in here and uh, I'm going to turn this off because I'm not using it. But um, there's digital tones and there is CTCSS tones in here as you can see. And you could just pick whatever you want. It's really simple. If you understand tones, you can enter them here. Not a problem at all. And then when you're done, you just click, you would click program and you would write data to Interphone. It's gonna ask for a password. Um, in the instructions, it says that it doesn't matter and it doesn't. It'll just write it just like it is now and all your stuff would be saved and you could unplug the MXR10 and go ahead and just use it. All right, that was the MXR10 review. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
In another video, I am going to try and put it in some sort of waterproof container. That way it can be a mobile repeater with an antenna that can hook up to it and a battery pack. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. I review all kinds of radio equipment and prepping gear uh, here on this channel. So if you're interested in that stuff, this channel's for you. And uh, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video.